half-assed interior work. Nobody reproduces Nova seat tracks. The holes don't line up, so that's 125 bucks down the drain. So I made my own plate. Cracked it. We are out with this and in with this. All right, all right, all right. All right, everybody, welcome back to the saga that is the Super Sketch Nova, where today we will be focusing on half-assed interior work. Honestly, I almost didn't film any of this just because I thought that the 12 people that still watch the show wouldn't care about my crappy interior, but I've run into a few obstacles here that I've had to overcome, and I thought for anybody that's out there building an old Nova, some of the creative solutions that I've come up with might be able to help them put theirs together. So let's get to it. The biggest problem I ran into was trying to find the correct set of seat tracks for this thing because nobody reproduces 72 Nova seat tracks. So you have to kind of improvise and just try to find something that works. And looking around online at some forums, there was a few people that were saying that 68 to 72 Chevelle tracks will work in a Nova. But here's the problem. The Nova tracks are 14 and a quarter long from this bolt hole to this bolt hole, whereas the Chevelle is 15. So my initial plan was to leave this one where it goes. It kind of has to go in this spot because of where it goes around these curves and everything. And then I was gonna take this one and move it back about an inch. And I did start doing that, I tacked it in. Ultimately didn't really like that because for one, I just didn't like the idea of moving this back from where it's supposed to be. I know it's not Rod where we do everything totally crappy, but I just didn't like it. The other thing that I didn't like about the Chevelle tracks is while one of the tracks locks with this lock here, the other seat track does not. So essentially, if you do a hard launch at the starting line or something like that, you're putting all that load on one track and two bolts. And I'd really like to put the load on two tracks and four bolts. I mean, do the math, that's double the strength if you do a hard launch at the track. And after doing a little bit more research, I realized that they were actually talking about 68 through 71 Novas, not 72 Novas, which use the same seat that you'll find in basically all 70s Camaros and Vegas. So then I thought to myself, self, since 72 Novas come with the same seats that you'll find in a 70 through 81 Camaro, why don't I just get a set of tracks for a 70 through 74 Camaro? And here's what I found. They are 16 and a quarter inches, which is actually longer of a spacing than 68 through 72 Chevelles. So once again, I was faced with a decision. Do I put this bracket back here and then drill holes through this bracket to match the seat because even the holes up here don't line up with the holes in the seat that I have. Which I actually think is a production flaw for these tracks because I saw reviews where people had to re-drill the holes to fit their stock Camaro seats. The other thing that I also didn't like about the 70 through 74 Camaro tracks is once again, we have one seat track that locks and the other one does not. This spring right here is just to help the track slide forward. It doesn't actually make it lock or anything. And again, I think that has something to do with this aftermarket manufacturer because some people were saying they just sent them back and rebuilt their stock Camaro tracks, which actually lock on both sides. So then I found out that tracks are also reproduced for 75 through 81 Camaro. Imagine that. And this is how they look. And if I try to put them in here, it's the same story. So then, after all of that, I realized that these seats are out of a 74 Vega, which, while the tracks aren't exactly the same as a 72 Nova, for one thing, they obviously bolt to the seats that I already have. The one thing that I did run into is where the seats go down to the floor, the tracks actually have some threaded studs that are secured to the seat track itself. So I had to cut those off, screw them back out, and then I had to figure out how to get the hole spacing in the tracks where they would line up with the factory 72 Nova brackets. And ultimately, I ended up being really glad that I ended up with a set of seats out of a Vega because the length of 
where those studs were is actually exactly the same as a 72 Nova, 14 and a quarter inches. So once you knock those studs out, then it's just a matter of getting your spacing correct side to side. Now this was a little bit different with the Vega, so I had to make my own set of brackets over here to make that work. Now in a 72 Nova, they do have brackets over on this track that space it in a little bit to miss the hump over here that they use for the tracks on a bench seat. So essentially what I did was kind of mimic those by making this bracket. And it did work. I was able to get everything bolted in where it would normally go and get the studs welded in where they would normally be in a 72 Nova. However, the thing I didn't like about that is that if you take your square here and you put it across these brackets, the outer studs are up about 5 16ths taller than the inner studs. And the back outer stud is up about a half inch taller than the back inner stud. So what that meant I had to do was add spacers to the inside track to get it to where the seat would sit level. And it was fine, it worked, but it made it feel like the seat sat way too tall. I mean, I'm not a very tall guy, and my head was pretty close to the headliner, and it just, it felt more like you were driving a truck. I just didn't really like it. And don't get me wrong, I love driving trucks, but when I get into a car, I wanna feel like I'm driving a car. So then I figured the best way to do this is to get the inside track dropped down as far as it'll go and bolted back directly to the seat, and then build my own brackets over here to drop this track down just below the seat frame by 5 sixteenths of an inch. So the way I ultimately got all of this to work was to drill holes right here in the center of the tracks in the back where the studs originally were in the Vega track. I ended up drilling these two, but I didn't end up using them. So then that gives me the 11 and 7 eighths that I need for the back. And then up front, I initially drilled these out centered where the studs were and then realized I couldn't use those because this stud here is over that way towards the door by a half an inch further than the front stud is. And same thing with this stud over here at the back by the door. It's over inside this way by a half an inch. So then for the fronts, I drilled a hole on the outside of this track and a hole on the outside of this track here by a half an inch here and a half an inch here that gives you the extra one inch that you need to have 12 and 7 eighths at the front of the track. And the way I built these brackets was I just took a piece of angle iron, lobbed one inch off the front of it, and then I took a plate, cut a one inch strip off of it, and then cut it in two inch sections to weld to each of these pieces of angle iron, which I dropped down 5 sixteenths of an inch. Then just welded a gusset on the back side of each one. And I did end up having to throw a couple of washers under the front edge here because in order for this track lock to not rub on the seat frame here, I just had to space this up just a little bit. And then I ended up just taking some safety wire and making it go in between the lever here and the lock over on this side. So now I have a good set of tracks, puts the seat in the correct position and both tracks lock. After getting all that done, that did drop it down just enough to actually feel pretty darn good. It wouldn't sound like much, but that extra 5 sixteenths of an inch, I mean, it just, it just makes it feel so much better. Unfortunately, Vega tracks are not reproduced either, but at least that gives you a whole nother set of tracks that you can look for instead of just being completely limited to the very, very obscure 72 Nova tracks because all Vegas came with bucket seats. So then that brings me to the next set of obstacles that I ran into trying to install a center console in the car. And in order to do that, you have to install this little hump right here. No big deal, really. I opted to, instead of welding it in, I used self-tappers to get it screwed in here. And that way, if I want to pull it out and mess with the Hearst linkage in there or anything, I have that option. And it's a good thing I did because initially I put it in in the wrong spot and had to redo it. And the reason for that was because when we put the console in, there's these two lines right here, and these are spaced four inches apart exactly. These two holes in this bracket are also spaced four inches apart exactly, and they're directly in the center of the tunnel. Well, that was sitting over kind of like that because when I had put this hump in, 
I just tried to get it all centered so that the stick came up with equal room on all sides and where it looked like it would work the best with the minimal amount of interference. So I pulled my self tappers out and shifted that over just a little bit so that now these lines right here are perfectly in line with these two holes. So now it sits in there straight. And originally I was going to use this plate that is used in 72 Nova console cars. Fits into the console real nicely. But the thing that I didn't like about this plate is that from the factory, it uses this little plastic plate that gets secured into here like this on the underside of it. And then as you shift back and forth, the stick way up here actually slides this back and forth in there. And that's what covers all that up so you don't see the factory sheet metal and all that stuff under there. Problem is I just didn't really like the idea of having more friction and another thing that you're sliding back and forth when you're moving the shifter. I really wanted to just slide as free as possible. So originally I thought, well, I just won't use this and I'll just toss this right down there and it'll be fine. And from this angle, it is fine. That, that's fine, that's perfectly acceptable. I could, I could take that, but then when we go around to the passenger side, you can see through there, you can see the gaps, you can see all the metal. It just looks like crap. And I just didn't really like it. And the other thing that I didn't really like about it is this hole up here is kind of small and it's up here reasonably high on this stick. And so if you go and do a huge power shift, well, there you go, you can see it just slammed into it. Um, and that, is pretty much the case it also does it in reverse because reverse kind of goes up a little bit further and that was pretty much the case even if you had this console placed in just the perfect spot so i didn't like that so i decided well we're not going to run this so then i found out that 73 and 4 novas which are pretty similar to 72s use this well and that actually bolts into the same console using the same screws. I thought, well, that's pretty cool. We'll just slip that in there and it'll work fine. Only issue was apparently the 73 and 4 console, which does look very similar to this, is just slightly different. Maybe it sits a little bit taller. Not sure. I do know that they have a bump out over here on the 73 and 4 cars that the 72 doesn't have. And that is so that with this angle coming out down that way, there's enough room for it to stick out over here a little bit. So what I ended up doing was trimming down the underside of this so that it would fit right down in there just perfectly. And as you can see, that definitely solves the problem of slamming gears because it no longer can hit at all in any gear. So that's great. And from this angle, it actually looks pretty decent. But then once again, if we come over to the passenger side, it looks even worse than the other one. So that wasn't gonna work either. And now that I went and cut this all up, I can't return it, so that's 125 bucks down the drain. So then I really started digging deep. And if you go back to 67 and 68 Camaros, they actually use this same plate as the 72 Nova does with this little slider. In fact, I actually think if you look at all of the stuff that's interchangeable between the Camaro and the Nova, I actually think that the Gen 3 Nova was kind of Chevy's way of just offloading all the old Camaro parts. But then here's the interesting thing. While the dash and everything on a 67 and 68 Camaro is totally different than a Nova, the 69 Camaro actually uses the same sheet metal here behind the dash. In fact, you can take a 69 Camaro dash pad and gauge assembly, and together with a few slight modifications, they mostly bolt right in, from the research that I've looked at anyway. And the cool thing about that is if you're somebody like me that really prefers round gauges rather than these linear ones like you see on Novas, that can be a, I don't know, pretty cool option maybe because my ultimate goal for this thing is for it to be as performance oriented as possible with sporty looking round gauges, with a smooth shifter, all that kind of stuff. But where the average person would look in here, even with a moderately trained eye and say, yeah, that's a stock 72 Nova interior. So then I looked at a 69 Camaro, and this is the shift tunnel that a 69 Camaro uses. Now, once again, it sat up just a little bit too high, so I had to cut one inch off the bottom of it. And then when you go and stick it down in here, you can see that there's gaps around the sides of it. 
but the 69 Camaro actually used the same shift boot as a 72 Nova, which is why it fits perfectly around this boot like this. So that got me a little bit closer to where I wanna be, but the problem is while the console in a 69 Camaro is similar to the one in a 72 Nova, it's not quite exactly the same. The plate that this tunnel mounts to in a 69 Camaro is actually square rather than beveled on the edges like this one and the screw holes are in a different spot. So what I did to solve that problem is I made my own little plate. And basically what I did was I just took some 12 gauge, cut it out to the exact shape that I needed, got some all thread that I cut down to about three quarters of an inch, welded it down here. And so now this mounts perfectly to my little plate, which now all drops right down into place. And then I painted the plate flat black to kind of match this, which I think is actually more of a satin, but it was close enough and it's what I had on hand, which just goes right up in here. Until one day when I actually get the gauge cluster that goes in that. And once again, the gauge cluster that fits in this also fits in a 69 Camaro. And when you look at it from both sides, it looks great. It also opens this up quite a bit bigger than the hole that was in that plate. So now when we slam gears, Everything works great. And my goal in the future is to actually use the same console that they used in 69 Camaros because the Camaro one actually has a little door right here so you can store stuff in the console and eventually I'll get the gauges that go right up in here. But it was a little more expensive than the Nova one so I, that's what I picked up for it for the time being just to kind of see how everything's gonna kind of go together and cover up the big massive hole that was in the floor right here. What's breaking? Oh, that's just great. Son of a bitch. Awesome. Awesome. Absolutely fantastic. Good plastic. Okay, so I'm back today for more punishment. Because remember when I said I shifted the console over towards the center by about three quarters of an inch? Well, apparently that pushed that little plastic tunnel over just far enough so that when I went to put it in reverse, the stick cracked it, just like that. So I thought, well, I'll just go ahead and order up another one, cut it down. But then the problem is it would have done exactly the same thing unless I shifted the center console back over towards the driver's seat, which I didn't really want to do. I would really prefer to have it in there straight. So then I got to thinking, well, if I'm gonna have to go through a bunch more work to make the Nova console work, then why don't I just go ahead and do what I ultimately want to do right now, which is put a Camaro console in. So we are out with this and in with this. And there was definitely some challenges to getting the Camaro console in as well, uh, mostly because the tunnel in a Camaro is totally different. It's like flat on the sides and flat on the top, and they design it at the angle that they want the console to sit at. The Camaro was designed right off the bat to have a console in it, but the Nova is kind of more of an afterthought. So they've got the tunnel that's round like you'd normally see on most muscle cars, but then they put a separate hump right here that we've already talked about. And then for bucket seats, they put these weird brackets in and all this stuff. Whereas in a Camaro, that stuff's already all there, ready for you to mount to on the floor pan. And the biggest problem that I had with the Camaro console is that it sat too tall in here to work. And I don't know why, because I thought that the Camaro tunnel was already taller than the Nova tunnel just by default. But when you're going between two different cars, you can turn around in circles all day trying to figure out what's different between this and that and the other thing. And ultimately at the end of the day, you just gotta kinda figure out how to make this stuff work and what you got. So what I ended up having to do was drop the Camaro console down by about three quarters of an inch. Now, the nice thing about that is that it's actually a two piece console so all the modifications are just done on the bottom piece and you don't really do anything with the top until you get the bottom in there correctly and it's much easier to see what you're doing in just the bottom piece now the camaro console had this for its center support 
and it actually had this little pin right here which is directly in the center of the console which actually helped to get it lined up but since the Camaro console sat too tall this had to get cut out and I made my own bracket that went around this and in order to make sure that that was straight I built the bracket first and attached it to this going across all of that and then once I verified that the two pins between the bracket I made and this pin here were in exactly the same spot, I went ahead and chopped this out. And the bracket that I built comes up a little bit and over, so that dropped the console down by about that three quarters of an inch. I did have to notch out about a half an inch around the front seat bracket to make this fit. And then there's a screw hole at the back of the Camaro console, and then I made sure that was centered between the pinch welds and then drilled a hole right where that needed to go in the rear bucket seat bracket. And then I put a nut insert in there for a quarter 20 bolt. And in order to make sure that the top plate was how it was supposed to be at the correct degree this way, I had to shim the back of the Camaro console up by about a quarter of an inch. And then for the front bracket, the Nova one looked like this. And the Camaro one looked more like this. Well, except I cut this one up but it had tabs on the side here that stuck up way too tall for how far I needed to move the console down to work in this car. So what I ended up doing was cutting these top tabs off of the Camaro bracket and welding them to my own piece of flat bar and then welded some little gussets on the side of that. And I had to notch out the front of the tunnel just a little bit too because it came down here to a point. So now the bottom section is in here how it's supposed to be. So then when we take the top section and we drop it right down in here, that's right where we want it. Then this plate goes down in here. And the reason that this works better and it shouldn't break the plastic piece is because like I said earlier, the Camaro plate being square instead of beveled at the edges actually moves this hole over towards the driver's side just enough so that this has less interference with the shift boot. And to be perfectly honest, if I had used a shifter stick that came up straight and then made its turn past the plate up here, I probably wouldn't have had to drop this down like I did anyway, but I really prefer the stick that is already angled down low rather than up high, because the biggest issue once again was hitting this right there. But I actually think this just looks a lot better having this drop down that low anyway because it was it was definitely up way too tall. But there you have it. This is how I've always wanted the Nova to be. I mean, <laughs> at least as far as the console and the seats are concerned. Um, and the rest we'll take care of later. right here all right we got 411 posi track out back 750 double pumper edelbrock intake board over 39 and a half to one flat top pistons 327 330 horsepower we're talking some fucking muscle There's a fiesta in the making as we speak up at the moon tower. I will see you there. Which now all drops right down. Drops right down. Which now all drops right down. <laughs> what? 
If you're laughing now, that's good. That means it'll be funny on the on the show for sure. Benny, I hope you got your wood screws. I'm gonna blow your doors off. All right, I think that's it. That's it. I mean, all right, all right, all right. All right, all right, all right. Hey, 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 watch the leather, man.